Welcome back to our channel, Curious Minds. We're about to embark on a journey into the digital battlefield where cybersecurity warriors and cyber criminals are locked in an ongoing struggle. But before we dive in, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content like this. Your support helps us create more engaging and informative content for you. Today, we're going to focus on one particular weapon in the cyber criminals arsenal the DDoS attack. It's a term you've probably heard before, especially if you've been following tech news. But what is it really? How does it work? And most importantly, why should we care? In the next few scenes, we'll break down the complexities of DDoS attacks, explaining how they work, the different types, their impact, and how we can protect ourselves from them. So sit tight, buckle up, and let's get started with an introduction to DDoS attacks. Have you ever wondered how a DDoS attack works? A question that may have crossed the minds of many, especially in this digital age where cybersecurity threats are on the rise. DDoS, or Distributed Denial of Service, is one such threat that's been making headlines. DDoS, as it stands, is malicious attempt to disrupt the normal functioning of a network, service or website by overwhelming it with a flood of internet traffic. In simpler terms, imagine a highway bustling with cars, and suddenly, there's an influx of thousands of vehicles all at once. This would cause a traffic jam, making it difficult for regular traffic to get through. That's exactly how a DDoS attack works, but in the digital realm. These attacks are not just random acts of disruption, but are often orchestrated by attackers with the intent to cause harm. A DDoS attack is like a virtual siege, where the attacker overwhelms the targeted server network or service with more data than it can handle, causing it to slow down or even crash. A key element to note here is the term distributed. This means that the attack is not launched from a single source, but is distributed across many compromised computers or systems referred to as a botnet. These botnets could be spread across the globe, making it challenging to trace back to the original attacker. DDoS attacks have emerged as a common method used by cyber criminals to disrupt network services. From multinational corporations to small businesses, no one is immune. The widespread accessibility of technology and the interconnectedness of our world have made it easier for these digital sieges to take place. But why should you care about DDoS attacks? Well, in this interconnected world, they can have far-reaching consequences from causing financial losses for businesses to disrupting essential services, the impact of these attacks can be significant. Now that we understand what DDoS is, let's delve deeper into how it works. Before we wrap up this scene, a big shout out to our channel members, Derek Tyson and David Henderson, for their unwavering support. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. So how do DDoS attacks actually function? Well, the key to understanding DDoS attacks lies in the first D, distributed. Unlike other cyber attacks, DDoS attacks don't come from a single source. Instead, they're launched from multiple computers, often tens of thousands, all over the world. These computers have been infected with malicious software, turning them into zombies that the attacker can control. This network of infected computers is known as a botnet. Imagine a city's traffic system Cars flow smoothly most of the time, with traffic signals managing the flow to prevent congestion. Now imagine if thousands of extra cars suddenly flooded the streets, all trying to get to the same place at the same time. The traffic system would be overwhelmed, leading to gridlock. This is essentially what happens in a DDoS attack. The target system, like the city's traffic system, is designed to handle a certain amount of traffic. But when a flood of extra traffic comes in, it can't cope. Let's delve deeper into the role of botnets. The attacker, often referred to as the botmaster, controls this army of bot computers. These bots are usually ordinary computers, like the one you might have at home, that have been infected by malware. The botmaster sends commands to these bots, instructing them to send traffic to the target system. A botmaster can amass a botnet in several ways. They might spread malware via email attachments, infected websites, or through vulnerabilities in software. Once a computer is infected, it becomes part of the botnet without the owner's knowledge. Now, 
When it's time to launch a DDoS attack, the botmaster sends a command to all the bots in the botnet. This command instructs the bots to start sending requests to the target system. These requests might be for a web page, a file, or any other type of data that the system can provide. The sheer volume of requests coming in all at once overwhelms the target system. It tries to respond to all the requests, but there are just too many. The system's resources are stretched thin and it starts to slow down. Eventually, it might stop responding altogether. Legitimate users trying to access the system find that it's unavailable or extremely slow. It's important to note that DDoS attacks aren't typically about stealing data or causing permanent damage. Instead, they're designed to cause disruption, to take a system offline or slow it down to the point where it's unusable. In short, DDoS attacks overwhelm a system with traffic, rendering it unable to function properly. They're a bit like a cyber traffic jam, with botnets playing the role of the extra cars flooding the streets. And just like a real traffic jam, they can cause a lot of frustration and disruption. Did you know there are different types of DDoS attacks? Yes, that's right. And today, we'll be delving into three basic types, volumetric, protocol, and application layer attacks. Let's start with volumetric attacks. As the word volume suggests, these attacks aim to overwhelm a network's bandwidth. The attacker floods the network with bogus data requests, causing the network to slow down or even crash. Think of it as a highway during rush hour. Too many cars can cause traffic to come to a standstill. Next up, we have protocol attacks. These are a bit more technical. They exploit weaknesses in a network's protocols, the rules that govern how data is sent and received. A common type of protocol attack is the SYN flood, where the attacker initiates a connection with a server but never completes it, leaving the server waiting and wasting resources. Last, but certainly not least, we have application layer attacks. These are the most sinister of the three. Why? Because they target specific applications rather than the entire network. For instance, an attacker might target a specific web page, causing it to load slowly or not at all. This can be particularly damaging for businesses that rely heavily on their online presence. So why are these distinctions important? Well, understanding the different types of DDoS attacks can help us develop more effective defense strategies. For instance, if we know we're dealing with a volumetric attack, we might increase our bandwidth or use rate limiting to manage the flood of requests. On the other hand, if we're facing an application layer attack, we might need to use more sophisticated measures such as behavior-based traffic analysis to identify and block malicious requests. In a nutshell, DDoS attacks are not a one-size-fits-all phenomenon. They come in different shapes and sizes, each with its own unique set of challenges. But by understanding these differences, we can arm ourselves with the knowledge we need to fight back. Each type of attack has its own unique characteristics and methods of disruption. Why should we worry about DDoS attacks? Well, imagine your business as a bustling marketplace. Customers are coming and going, transactions are taking place and everything is running smoothly. Suddenly, a swarm of people rush in. They aren't there to shop, but to create chaos. They take up all the space, blocking legitimate customers from entering and bringing your business to a standstill. This is essentially what a DDoS attack does to your online business. The immediate impact of a DDoS attack is downtime. Your website becomes inaccessible to legitimate users, halting all online operations. Depending on the duration of the attack, this could mean significant loss of revenue. For instance, if you're an e-commerce business that makes $1,000 an hour, a 10-hour long DDoS attack could potentially cost you $10,000. And that's a conservative estimate. But the financial damage doesn't stop there. You also need to consider the cost of mitigation, which may involve hiring external security experts, investing in DDoS prevention technologies, or even paying ransom to the attackers. The damage, however, isn't just monetary. DDoS attacks can wreak havoc on a company's reputation. In a world where customers value speed and reliability, a prolonged website outage can erode trust. 
users may question the security of your platform and in the worst case scenario, turn to your competitors. The lost trust can take years to rebuild and for some businesses, the damage may be irreversible. Moreover, DDoS attacks can be a smokescreen for more sinister activities. While your security team is distracted dealing with the attack, cybercriminals can exploit this opportunity to infiltrate your network and steal sensitive data. DDoS attacks can cause significant damage, making them a serious concern for any online business. But remember, understanding the threat is the first step to effective defense. So stay informed, stay vigilant, and most importantly, stay safe. What can we do to protect ourselves from DDoS attacks? Well, we're now at the point in our journey where we tackle this important question. It's crucial to remember that while no method can offer absolute protection against DDoS attacks, several strategies can certainly help minimize the risk and potential damage. Firstly, maintaining a robust security posture is key. This involves keeping all systems, applications, and network infrastructure updated with the latest patches and security updates. An outdated system is like an open invitation for attackers. Regularly scan for vulnerabilities and fix them promptly. Also, ensure that your system is configured correctly. Misconfigurations can often leave doors wide open for DDoS attacks. Secondly, consider using DDoS protection services. These services work by absorbing and rerouting the traffic directed at your network during a DDoS attack. They have the capacity to handle the massive influx of traffic that characterizes these attacks. They effectively act as a buffer, preventing the attack from reaching your network. Some even use advanced machine learning algorithms to distinguish between legitimate and malicious traffic, allowing the good while blocking the bad. Thirdly, having a response plan in place is crucial. This is your blueprint for action when an attack occurs. It outlines the steps to take, the people to contact, and the processes to follow. It's like a fire drill for your network. Regularly test this response plan and update it as necessary. In addition to these primary strategies, there are several other measures you can take. For instance, over-provisioning bandwidth can provide some degree of protection. This involves having more bandwidth available than you typically need giving you extra capacity to handle sudden spikes in traffic. Another noteworthy strategy is rate limiting. This involves restricting the number of requests a server will accept within a certain time frame from a single IP address. It's like a bouncer at a club, ensuring no one person takes up too much of the server's attention. You can also employ IP blacklisting. This involves blocking traffic from certain IP addresses that are known sources of DDoS attacks. It's like having a list of unwelcome guests and ensuring they're not allowed in. Finally, consider implementing load balancing. This involves distributing network traffic across various servers to ensure no single server is overwhelmed. It's like having a team of workers instead of just one, sharing the load to ensure no one member is overwhelmed. All these measures combined can create a formidable defense against DDoS attacks. It's about being proactive staying updated and always being prepared for the possibility of an attack. While there's no foolproof way to prevent DDoS attacks, these strategies can certainly help reduce the risk. Remember, in the world of cybersecurity, the best defense is a good offense. Don't wait for an attack to happen. Take steps now to protect your network and ensure its resilience against DDoS attacks. We've covered a lot about DDoS attacks today. In the digital realm, these attacks are like tidal waves, overwhelming systems with a flood of traffic. They sneak in, often unnoticed, only to unleash chaos, slowing down services, or in worst cases, shutting them down entirely. We've delved into the inner workings of these attacks, understanding how they use multiple compromised devices to launch a coordinated assault. We've also explored the many forms they can take, from volumetric attacks that drown systems in data to application layer attacks that cleverly mimic legitimate traffic. We've touched upon the impacts too, the downtime, the loss of business, the damage to reputation, 
And finally, we've discussed prevention strategies from simple steps like keeping systems updated and secure to more complex measures like leveraging cloud-based DDoS protection services. Remember, in the world of cybersecurity, knowledge is your best defense. Stay informed, stay secure. Thank you for being with us on this journey through the digital battlefield, understanding the storm that is DDoS attacks. If this video helped in enhancing your knowledge and understanding of DDoS attacks, please give it a thumbs up. Your support motivates us to continue creating content that empowers you in the face of cyber threats. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated with our latest videos. We have a lot more to share with you about cybersecurity, from the latest threats to the most effective defenses. Remember, in this digital age, staying informed is not just an advantage, it's a necessity. We appreciate your time and encourage you to share this video with your friends, colleagues and loved ones. Let's spread the knowledge and build a safer digital community together. Stay tuned, stay secure.